We've been hearing and talking a lot about Tesla's big shift going on with the company, taking the balls to the wall when it comes to autonomy in robotaxi. And that's a reference to the throttles on trains and planes. Don't make it weird for the record, but we get it, okay? Elon in a recent tweet was explaining that he wasn't exactly betting the company on autonomy, but basically putting all hands on deck and full focus on it. And we've been hearing that through various sources from within the company that Tesla's not necessarily canceling the $25,000 compact car, but just kind of putting it on the back burner, which honestly, the more I think about the $25,000 car these days, the more I'm starting to realize, okay, even though I'm somewhat bearish on robo taxis, Elon probably has a bit of a point here. There's a lot of things Elon's done that I don't agree with. I've personally said on very many occasions that I think he should leave Tesla. Tesla has a lot of talented people there already. I think he should go balls to the wall in SpaceX and Neuralink and the Boring Company and focus far more on those brands but even so, it's safe to say that the 4680 batteries have not really lived up to a lot of the hype or originally promised claims that were set out at Tesla's battery day in 2020. And there's reason to believe that maybe Tesla was thinking that battery production or the unboxed process was going to be able to save them a lot of money on manufacturing and the closer and closer they get to working on this assembly line and realizing what the cost of materials is going to be for this cheaper hypothetical compact car. Elon probably really quickly came to the realization this is not going to have a lot of great profit margins. And especially when so much of the car market is dictated by how good of an interest rate can people get. And as some of my friends have brought up to me, when you start getting in lower and lower price brackets, the end consumer gets a lot more picky because they're on a much tighter budget. So you're going to have a harder time selling them on the higher registration fees, the higher insurance, or of course, full self-driving. Even at 99 bucks a month is going to be difficult to swallow as you target a lower and lower price bracket. Not to mention, lots of Model Ys and Model 3s in the used space are already hitting that $25,000 price and actually diving beneath it sometimes as well. And Tesla knows that it's going to take a couple of years to get that kind of compact car into production anyway. What is a used Model Y or Model 3 going to cost by that point if they're already with tax credits and stuff in the mid $30,000 range? With all of those obstacles coming together, I kind of understand why Tesla might might be a little hesitant to just bet the whole company or assume that the future of the company is just about making cheaper cars, even though that's what I really want, that's what I was really excited for. Just from a consumer standpoint, it sounds cool for Tesla to have their own variant of a Corolla, but because Elon is such a risk taker, he's an adventurer, he loves companies being run in startup mode, he loves when the odds are against him, I kind of see where he's getting at here. He's seen a lot of progress and improvements with the full self-driving suite, they're probably seeing disengagements and interventions take a steep decline with this latest nothing but neural net release and I think Elon is grossly underestimating how difficult it's going to be to get robo taxis legally working in very many jurisdictions. It has to be approved on a per city basis. You can't just send out an update right now to all Teslas and suddenly have them driving around with no people in them like it's literally not legally possible at this time. There's only a handful of cities that are approving Waymos and there's only a certain amount of robo taxis those companies can operate and there has to be employees that are ready to intervene or the manufacturer has to be responsible for them at any given moment. There's a lot of challenges that Tesla hasn't even scratched the surface on yet. Just getting the car safe and reliable, that's one huge mountain, but the legal hurdles and the liability hurdles, I think, is a far bigger mountain that he may not be anticipating. But even if he is, I think it kind of makes a bit of sense for Tesla to prioritize this, even if I don't think it's going to go as smoothly or as according to plan as many others do. Many people, I think, look at the robo taxi code of like oh well once the software is good enough all of the obstacles just fall down everybody's gonna approve it all the regulators will suddenly be okay with it and nobody will want to buy a car anymore because the robo taxi will just drive you around flawlessly and have no problems and it'll be so affordable to run that uber and lyft won't be able to compete so a lot of people have this happy rainbow view of robo taxis of this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow whereas i look at it as kind of like a trail of gold going up a really steep and difficult mountain, a rough, rigid mountain made of legal battles and liability battles and insurance battles because even a robo-taxi that's ten times safer than a human, which by the way, right now, FSD is definitely not. In fact, I think a big hurdle that they still have to figure out is how to teach these cars to navigate parking lots effectively with over 1,500 miles of FSD on. Vast majority of the time the Tesla doesn't know how to get to the actual supercharger. I have to navigate it through the parking lot and get it to pull into a space. But even with a super 
super safe system that was super reliable and did all the things that I wish it did, it's still gonna crash. It's still gonna have issues, and there will still be incidents, whether or not they're the RoboTaxi's fault, there's still gonna be a huge liability game, and it doesn't take much to shut all of these things down on a nationwide scale because we've never had one piece of software that's been in control of two million vehicles simultaneously. Right now, we let the individual driver who has their own personal driver's license take the fall for whatever the car does. But we've never had a point where one brand is now owning and operating all of these vehicles. And even if it's super extremely safe, the regulatory and legal process of what goes on when one of these vehicles makes a mistake or is involved in a collision and maybe didn't behave the way we thought it would or didn't stop or didn't go around the construction zone in a way that people were satisfied with, there is a much bigger cash pile to legally go after and sue or try to regulate more heavily than before, opposed to just, you know, one guy making a mistake because he was drunk or because he was texting. Now it turns into this whole game of, okay, what leadership is going on that's leading into these problems with the software? And I think those kinds of obstacles, and especially as robotaxis are threatening to a lot of people's jobs and livelihoods, that's going to affect the approval rating in many cities. And as we're already seeing with many different YouTubers performance of FSD, it can perform really great in certain regions that are more well documented and have a lot more training data and perform much, much worse in other areas where it hasn't been trained as often. So the neural net is not as prepared for it. So I still see all these limitations of like, yeah, this is going to be a struggle and this is going to be a real hard grind for Tesla, for the software team, for the legal team and the regulators to get on board with. I mean, we can't even get mirrors off of our cars in the United States, despite other countries realizing that cameras can be far more efficient and just as safe. But our government here in the U.S. works incredibly slowly, and this is where robotaxis are kind of being prioritized, not to mention Canada really cracking down on a lot of different autonomous driving software. So I personally don't think that level 5 robotaxis are truly around the corner. I could see level 4 robotaxis, where they're really restricted and there's only a couple dozen available within a certain select cities. I could see that potentially being ready within the next couple years, and that'll probably make for really good PR at Tesla, because they can say, see, we did it! We've delivered the robotaxi! We have a vehicle with no steering wheel and pedals driving people around San Francisco, but the strings attached to that whole robotaxi promise are, you know, much, much higher than most people initially thought, where it would just be like, oh yeah, all the cars go everywhere now. But with so many different EV brands all trying to figure out their own voice and their own character in the EV space, I personally think it's totally fine that Tesla wants to be a bit more radical, wants to be the autonomy focused company, while Rivian can be more of the adventure focused company and try their best to figure out how to make that more affordable and relatable to the masses. And Aptera is more doubling down on how to be the efficiency focused company. How can we make solar mobility viable and make vehicles that are far, far cheaper to own and operate than any other? And then Lucid can have their luxury focused. And of course, the legacy automakers can lean into their brand reputations and legacy that they've left behind. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of people were kind of expecting somewhat of a boring Tesla model, you know? I kind of like the idea of a cheap basic Tesla that's only $25,000, but I have to admit it would be hard to justify this little compact car if there's going to be, you know, Highland refreshed Model 3s that are probably close to the same price in a couple of years. That's going to be smooth ride, lots of storage, good range, good efficiency, the ventilated seats, all things that probably Tesla would have to compromise on and take out with this theoretical Model 2 or compact car, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I was not that pumped or that excited for a Chevy Bolt with a Tesla logo. You know, let GM reinvent the Bolt and that can be the cheap, hopefully with faster charging, more addressable vehicle. And Tesla can try to focus a bit more on where the autonomy brand, and if it's possible to come up with level five robo taxis, then we're gonna find the way. And I do believe that Tesla is closer than anybody else on the market to figuring out a generalized, scalable approach to robo taxis. Neural net training with a vision only approach that can be built into a very affordable vehicle. You know, most of these Waymos are like six figures and they use a crap ton of power and they kind of fall apart in the rain. And Tesla has their own unique set of advantages, but I do appreciate their focus on trying to make sure that all of this autonomous driving software can work with pretty bare bones hardware because they want to probably build a robo taxi that's fairly affordable to manufacture and can probably bring in a lot more money for the company theoretically if it does work and it is able to make money throughout the day and arguably that does support Tesla's mission statement quite a bit because at least in a perfect world if everything goes according to Elon 
Elon's plan, the Robo Taxi could do the job of five individually owned vehicles. So if a Robo Taxi could be used five times more often, move five times as many people as a car that you personally own, which spends most of its day sitting in a parking lot or sitting in your garage, yeah, that does technically help a lot with the electrification transition, helps people rely less on car ownership, which is of course great. And if it's true that behind the scenes, Tesla is finding it more and more difficult to manufacture vehicles at extreme scale, like even with the 4680s, even with the unboxed process, they're realizing this is just not going to be very profitable for us to try to sell one car, you know, 2 million, 3 million units a year of a single model. Yeah, this is actually turning out to be way more complex, way more difficult than we initially thought. Instead, let's just assemble a robo taxi that fills the job of five cars and we can just build 1 million of those a year. Now, again, at the end of the day, I think the bigger problem is you're not going to be able to get legal approval from regulators in various different states and cities to let you deploy a million robo taxis a year. But again, Tesla's probably thinking that, well, we just need the data. If we can just prove that it's much safer than a human, then all of the legal issues will just fall down and we won't have to worry about any of those things. In reality, I don't think it'll be that simple for the same reason Tesla can't even get their insurance service in every state. And again, the performance of getting FSD safe and reliable when it's unsupervised, I think is going to be a lot more challenging than he originally thinks. As has proven with time and time again, Elon always thinks we're a lot closer to robo taxis than we initially thought. So how do we know he's not falling for it again? Seeing a big improvement in going, oh, well, it's just next year. We're basically done. In reality, no, we could be another five to 10 years away before it is five times safer than a human or 10 times. But again, we could hit another local maximum. I still personally think if I wanted my Tesla to be safer than I was at driving, it needs to be able to see better than I can. And countless times, pretty much every time I go to a stop sign, I'm still able to see a lot better than it can. It has to creep a lot further out. And that's not the NHTSA's fault. The NHTSA is to blame for the coming to a complete stop. But after it's made that complete stop, it still has to creep in order to get clear visibility down both ways of the street, which I don't have to because I can see a lot better than the current camera hardware can. So maybe the robo taxi they unveil in August could have better camera positioning, better camera layouts, and who knows, maybe it turns out that hardware 4, hardware 5 is actually what's needed to achieve the safety rating of regulatory approval. Elon's convinced we only need hardware 3, which worst case scenario, Tesla isn't able to achieve, you know, a generalized scalable approach to robo taxis, but all of the Tesla customers get a really impressive, really capable software feature that no one else on the market comes anywhere close to. Like no other car is even attempting to do the things that even a 2016 or 2017 Model S is capable of doing with the latest version of full self-driving. That's pretty nuts that a car that's like seven or eight years old, yes, with some hardware retrofits, is capable of doing these amazing things. And even the latest tech from other companies are like, yeah, highway driving is enough, but roundabouts turning on city streets and letting you do it anywhere. You don't have to have pre-mapped highways and stuff. Yeah, that's insane. And that alone, I think, could keep a lot of people coming back to Tesla in the future as they just try to move more inventory of Model 3s and Ys. And sure, down the road, if they discover that the robo-taxi thing isn't as profitable as they initially hoped, I wouldn't be surprised if they do eventually come back to making a cheaper $20,000 car. Hopefully, they also get around to making a full-size SUV, a Tesla van, all that stuff we're looking for. But I understand why Elon wants to pursue the robo-taxi thing first, even though I don't personally believe in it. If it is possible, then I think Tesla's in the best position to figure it out. They have almost no debt, $30 billion in the bank, and enough recurring revenue to keep the company afloat. I don't think that he is really betting the company on robo-taxis because even if it doesn't go anywhere near as good as he's hoping, they'll still be bringing in enough revenue to keep the company afloat, but they might give a huge opportunity to their competition to catch up quite a bit, fill in the gaps in the market that Tesla is currently not filling, like a more affordable, more efficient vehicle like an Aptera or a full-size SUV like the R1S, which is selling incredibly well now, and Tesla doesn't really have a direct competitor with it. So they could lose a lot of their competitive advantage if the future of the car market does involve just like buying whatever car fits your needs best. But if I'm wrong, and I would love to be wrong, and it turns out that a generalized, you know, level five robo taxi is achievable and it is possible, then yeah, Tesla can really revolutionize the industry quite a bit. But I also think personally that there will still be a lot of people that like to buy and own their own cars, even if robo taxis exist. For the same reason that a lot of people don't buy EVs these days because of misinformation and they just want to keep driving what they're used 
to driving, so they keep buying gas cars. That tradition that people are hesitant to change away from will probably keep a lot of people from wanting to ride around in robo taxis. They'll be like, oh, those are dangerous. I saw a headline that said someone died in one once, or the battery in it is gonna explode. I still deal with these kinds of comments with my EV now. We'll probably still deal with those comments with a robo taxi. But what do you guys think of Tesla's approach of going balls to the wall with robo taxis? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.